Today, it's a Let's Resin video, but this is not some attractive millennial lady. Oh no, it's a millennial man. And I'm gonna be doing the most manly crafting possible. Yes, that's right, crafting for tabletop role-playing games. Today we're doing it cheap and we're doing it quick. The issue with using traditional resin is that it takes a full 24 hours for that to cure. And if you're gonna be using traditional molds, well, those molds are probably gonna take eight hours to cure. So if you're using Oyamaru, then you can slap that in hot water and your mold is ready in minutes because you can put that uh, mold in the freezer, it'll cool down, the Oyamaru will harden, and you're ready to go in a couple minutes. And with the UV resin, well, if it's just a shallow little thing, then you really only have to cure it for two minutes under the light. And if you're dealing with a complex casting, then with UV resin, it only takes about 10 minutes because with a transparent mold, you can kind of flip it over and hit it on all sides. And Oyamaru is transparent. Now, you may or may not know this, but uh, I actually started off doing a lot of amateur molding and casting when I first got into the hobby. It was just one of those things where I knew I could get super cheap mold making material at local craft stores on clearance, on sale. So I experimented a lot and I actually had some pretty decent successes at using basic mold making material to make copies of some of the cool miniatures that I owned when I first got into the hobby. And yeah, as you can see, these are pretty amateurish. A lot of holes, a lot of divots. Uh, very clearly, I didn't use enough material for some of the size of these molds. But hey, it worked out okay. And I learned quite a bit. And then I moved on to crafting stuff with green stuff. And Oyumaru. But I decided to see what would happen if I used cheap UV resin in Oyumaru molds. Oyumaru, of course, is Japanese mold making materials. And Let's Resin is some of the cheapest resin that you can buy online. This whole thing for two bottles and the light, that cost me under $30. And as I figured, the clear Oyumaru material worked out great with one part molds, but I did wanna try out the original molds that I had, and uh, those did not work out uh, quite as nice. Now, I think it's just because I had an older mold here so I decided to try some of the deeper, more complex molds. And a deep mold will work when you're working with a translucent mold. But when you're working with a non-translucent mold, you're gonna have to use um, very shallow molds. That's the only thing that's gonna really work when it comes to the non-translucent molds. These are mostly very shallow Oyumaro molds. So you can see, they worked out really nice. Even that skull on the right there, you definitely had some depth and detail, which worked out pretty good for a one-part mold. And I made some fresh one-part molds with, once again, that little base thing. And then I took an impression of a metal coin. And then I took an impression of some terrain bits just to see. And as you can see, the resin worked perfectly in these very shallow molds even with very complex details like that very nice so the next step is to try to use simple kind of fold molds now these are just deep molds that are technically not really two-part molds but they're very deep one-part molds that have kind of a fold in them and those worked out pretty well now obviously i think working with green stuff in molds like these works out much better but I did have some limited success with doing like a nice, very deep fold mold of these mushrooms, especially. Uh, the one part mold that I made for the little uh, owl bear cub, yeah, did not work out really well. Uh, with shallow bits like this, you really need like a proper two part mold, which, uh, is, which, so yeah. But yeah, mushrooms painted up nice. The Let's Resin obviously is meant to be painted, so no issues with traditional polyurethane primer and painting them up worked out pretty good. So yeah, it it's, it's really looking like the deep uh, one part molds or the fold over molds seem to be the best use of this. But I did want to continue trying out different stuff. 
Oh yeah, and I did some just basic uh, ink washes of the translucent mushroom here to make a purple translucent mushroom. This is just Army Painter uh, purple ink. And you, you got this nice little effect like that. But yeah, this miniature here, uh, the Grenadier Monster Manuscript Miniature. I forget the name of this. I'll put a text thing up there. But yeah, this little miniature here was such a neat miniature. I wanted to make a copy of it. So into the hot Oyumaru mold. Obviously, if you're not familiar with it, you just soak it in hot water and it becomes pliable. So there's the one part. I put that in the freezer so it would stay nice and cold when I put the uh, other part of it on there. Now, I've tried this before, uh, and it's worked okay before. The only other step that I took with this is that I tried to seal up the edges a little bit with some extra Oyamaru's, so there's no leakage. Um, which you can see here. This is just me kind of going over the edges of the empty mold with hot Oyumaru to sort of just free, just sort of like uh, seal off those edges. So I clamped it together, I poured in the Let's Resin Resin, and I hit it for about uh, eight minutes with the lamp. And the Let's Resin, I just did the traditional, this is the low viscosity hard resin, uh, just did the traditional tap, tap, tap. Uh, I probably should have set up like a rumble table with a uh, uh, driver or something. But yeah, no, I didn't do that. Just tap, tap, tap. I poked it a little bit. And it worked out okay. But very clearly, yeah. Oh, and I also like turned the mold over. So I hit all the sides of the mold with the UV light as it was curing. It took about 10 minutes of UV light. Uh, and very much holy, very much a very, <laughs> almost a waste of a mold. Frankly, you can see that there's all sorts of bits and parts that did not get molded correctly. If I would have used a traditional resin and mold making material, it would have turned out a lot better. So obviously, the two part molds for this is a complete waste. I would say just use regular mold making materials. However, I did have this foam brain. And the good thing about Oyumaru is that the way it's so pliable, you can actually use it to make reproductions of stuff that uh, other mold making materials can't reproduce, like the very soft foam brain. So I made an impression of the foam brain, Oyumaru in the freezer, hit it with the Let's Resin. Let's Resin does get hot, but as long as you let it sit there and cool off before you take it out of the mold, it shouldn't hurt the mold that much. Uh, later on, uh, I only got four casts of this because I was very impatient. But yeah, I got a nice little one-part mold out of this brain where the brain is flat on the bottom, but that works out perfectly for the uses that I have. I used some Army Paint Painter Red Ink to paint one pink. And you can see here I'm showing off the flash of the third one, how uh, the mold is starting to fall apart a little bit on the edges. And finally, after the fourth one that I took out of this mold... The mold was pretty much destroyed at this point. However, uh, only the mold was destroyed. So you could still reuse the Oyumaru. Nothing's wrong with the Oyumaru. None of the resin stuck with it. So you can just chop up, up that Oyumaru and then heat it up again and reuse it. And yeah, I got four brains out of the little squishy uh, foam brain. And I was very happy with this. Uh, I think that letting it cool longer was the secret to getting a nice shiny clear cast of it and uh yeah worked out great the one that i tinted the red and uh red ink there looks amazing so i did get all of these miniatures from about roughly i used uh about three quarters of one bottle so of all the 30 dollars, i still have one complete bottle in about a little less than a quarter of another bottle of uv resin and the light Still seems to work fine, so as an investment of testing out new methods of doing stuff, I think this worked out pretty good. I got some neat parts. I already have a couple ideas of what I want to do with those brain bits, and obviously they just work good as is. If you just need a giant crystal brain in the middle of a dungeon, dungeon for some reason, and I do need that, then uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a good experiment. Uh, 
please let me know in the comments below if you've experimented with UV resin at all and if you have any questions on what I did. Obviously, I think that there has been a lot of uses with UV resin and Oyumaru in the past. Maybe you know of an effect that uh, is even uh, better, that works out better. It seems like deep uh, translucent molds for one part molds, that seems to be the absolute best use for the UV resin. If you want to check out Black Magic Craft, did a video on UV resin where he talked about little uses like make li making little like mucus and uh, saliva dropping droplets with it for miniatures and he showed off how you can use it with shallow one part molds as well he had the fancy uh green stuff uv resin this was the super cheap stuff so yeah let me know in the comments below if you've used similar products and what projects you have done lately